welcome to yet another episode of the Youth Roundtable. And today we are continuing to discuss some of the issues that affect our country, but from a youth perspective. And as usual, we have a capable group of panelists to dissect some of these issues. This week, a very important matter and issue is the issue of the forum in the Forum of Democratic Change, uh, which has been the second biggest political party in Uganda for a long period of time. Uh, we saw turmoil. We believe conflict is, is, is human. And uh, it, has, it, is, it is just that in this time around, it's in FDC's camp. We saw a rift uh, in the last couple of weeks between two camps within the FDC. That was uh, Amuriat and the Secretary General. And on the other side, uh, we saw Honorable Semuju Nganda and facing off last week, we also saw them on front line discussing some of these issues. Forum for Democratic Change um, is, well, is a party of hope uh, for democracy in Uganda. And what happens within it is a matter that should concern all of us, despite our respective allegiances in terms of political parties. And to discuss that, we have this very capable panel. We shall also be delving into the midterm performance assessment uh, of government. We are in between 2021 and 2026, so it's time to see what has government done, is it performing well, and especially, is it performing for us, the youth? So thank you very much, our dear viewers, and I'll just introduce my panelists, starting from here. I have Mr. Bisoro Andrew, the District Youth Chairman for Bundibujo. You're most welcome. Thank you so much. Good morning, our listeners and viewers out there. Yeah, do we have greetings being... from Bundibujo? Greetings from the young people of uh, Unibujo district. Yeah. 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 The you're land most, of Kokoa. You're most welcome, Honorable. And then Honorable Mucho Gatuya, uh, the former guild speaker, actually my guild speaker uh, during my time at Makere. You're most welcome. Thank you so much, Ukot. Uh, by the names of Gatuya Mucho, Jacques, I am the former 87th guild speaker of Makere University. I am currently a laboratory technologist. Yes. Uh, serving the country yes a very good morning and um, to the youth out there please listen in and hear what you have to say about the matter you're most welcome Muche. Thank and I, so I forgot uh, my brother andrew is a, is a lawyer and uh, a property practitioner i'm a property management practitioner yes uh, maybe you'll tell us <laughs> during this <laughs> and then we have uh mr justice to come i hope i got that right yeah 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 yes um Mr. Justice is a FDC mobilizer. Oh, the yeah. former, former FDC flag former, bearer. Yeah, flag bearer for Makere. Mm. You're most welcome. Yeah. And uh, today you're on the hot seat. Yeah. Uh, as Forum for Democratic Change. We need to know what's going on and what it means for the rest of us. But you're most welcome. Uh, thank you so much, my brother. Uh, God. I'm so happy to be here. And uh, my name is Justice Tukamshaba. Yeah. Uh, an engineer. And uh, I'm so glad to be here and looking forward to take up this uh, wonderful discussion. Yes, you're most welcome. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Agaba Ivan, who is a renewed Uganda stalwart. You're most welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Yes. Sam. Um, glad to be here. My name is Agaba Ivan, as introduced Ali. Um, I'm a cooperative uh, sort of specialist. I'm a cooperative man. Um, circles, investment club, money lending, um, that, that's my niche. And I'm glad to be here to, to share the little I know about the topics uh, being discussed. Yes, and uh, we'll start from you. Um, FDC party, uh, this is a party that uh, came up in 2006. I believe it, uh, it started from the reform agenda, forming into uh, one of the mass political parties in Uganda, though mutual say there's only one, but uh, <laughs> one of the mass political parties and gained a lot of clout. And we saw Dr. Kiza Besige uh, performing, performing very well, uh, coming second in about three, four elections. Yeah. He did not participate in the last one, uh, which also affected the, the votes that, of course, they were represented by Amuriat, uh, which affected the votes uh, by, that FDC managed to garner taking up that space and garnering up to 34%. And many people are questioning now, what's the future of FTC? 
And to make it worse, in the last two weeks, we saw a feud between a camp led by Nandala Mafabi and Honor Muriat. And then on the one side, we see Semuju Nganda and the other colleagues uh, who met in Zambia. And we saw another meeting in Naja Nankumbi. What do you make of the Forum for Democratic Change? Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, since Mr. Tukamshava here was the man in the hot seat, I thought <laughs> we'd begin with him first. But mm. I think in no order, let's just begin that way. Now, um, what, I, what I believe is taking place is, uh, is a concept called uh, opposition hangover. Mm. You know, being in opposition for too long can have its adverse effects. Mm. Um, so I, I, I think that what's taking place is what naturally takes place world over whenever a certain group is in opposition for mm. quite a while. Mm. Uh, I, I, I will say that I, I don't think that any politician worth their name, yeah. opposition in Uganda, um, has, has not had contact or has not met or engaged in deals uh, with uh, the, 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 the great man himself, the president, mm. or his agents. Yes. And I think this is what, what seems to be unraveling mm. in, um, in one, one of uh, uh, Uganda's biggest opposition political parties. Eh? Yeah. Now, you see, when, when money and when what, I, what I think is happening is Mm. Uh, the eater is failing to share. Yeah. <laughs> it's when it has failed to share, then the, the, the eaters that feel have been um, aged against yeah. will come out and begin throwing. Um, it might be red herrings because they cannot adduce evidence mm. to, to that effect, but uh, it, it, it still leaves the perception. And you know with politics, usually mm. perception precedes reality. Yes. Even if uh, the committee that was instituted to investigate well, the, the, the fracas happening mm. at FDC was to come up with conclusive recommendations about what is taking place. Yes. The perception in the minds of the ordinary Ugandan is already damaged. Eh? Mm. So I, I, I think, one, they should have come up with uh, mechanisms through which they would solve uh, their contradictions internally uh, but but anyway, who, yes. who, who would bring about such mechanisms if you find most, if not all, yes. of the founder members of the FDC have, have left it? Mm. Uh, we had an exodus, 2005-2006, yes. as we were getting into the multi-party political dispensation yes. of people from NRM. Mm. Uh, Moving the, to FDC. Yes, the Kategayas, yeah. the Mamanya Mshegas, the yes. Muntus, the Besiges, the, the Maria Matembez. Mm. So that was the NRM group, the Winnibianimas. Mm. But most, if not all, the Ruvalamira Rangas have, have left the party. Yes. So you would ideally think Is that. Is there a reason for that first group leaving? One, I think. Uh, Opposition politics is uh, it's all about uh, throwing around false accusations and and abusing and uh, smear campaigns, mm. which I, I think but people I thought, people people thought, the crop of Amanya That's Mushinga. the service of opposition to to government. Not critique. Smear, not smear campaign. Critique. Mm. Critique. Uh, give give credit where it's due, mm. but do not un unfairly mm. smear. Or, 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 or mad sling yes. people's names. Eh? Mm. So that, that's, I think, what the old crop of opposition could not tolerate. Mm. So they had to walk out peacefully. And that's how even the Abdul Katuntus left and, um, and became um, independent. Mm. Um, Abdul Katuntu is very powerful, in his, at least in his constituency. Yes. In Uguay. So, and those were among the founder members of of um, the Chapa Karuhangas left. Mm. Chapa Karuhangas, this, this was the NDP. Because for FDC to form, they had to bring together the PAFO of the, the Montus that were in um, the Constituent Assembly, yeah. the NDP of Chapa Karuhanga, and then um, the, the Reform Agenda. Yeah. So you find that uh, these people left 
they party early. My point is the true north would be set by the founder members mm. of the party mm. that seem to have deserted it and left it early. So you you let or relinquish yes. your position as a founder member. So the true north then becomes whatever opportunists or naysayers that joined you mm. as a political vehicle to achieve their selfish ends. It's, it's those people that set your true north. But, but, but uh, Mr. Gaba, um, just to, on the side of FPC, uh, one could argue that why is it always that people blame the party, the, the, the victim? For example, uh, according to the facts, if true, then FDC is a victim of uh, imported monetization of its politics, manipulation, sp espionage, and all these things. Why is that they are blamed for being able to take it? Uh, nobody talks about the one who gave the money. Isn't there something wrong with picking seven or whatever billions and putting it in another party? <laughs> well... Oh, oh, for him, is is immune to, to this kind of blame. I think in this part of the world, uh, being a member on the opposition side is quite challenging. Mm. And the challenge is unknown. Yes. Yes, you'll be approached by whoever approaches you uh, with all sorts of promises and uh, opportun job opportunities in government. So I think it's it's known. Yes. Uh, what what somebody is going to offer you mm. and the challenges that generally a person in opposition faces yes. are known. Yes. So if you're seen to to fall for those challenges, mm. Mm. you say, okay, let's assume that the ideal issue of money mm. is, 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 was novel to us. It's mm. something that we didn't know. Mm. Then I would say, okay, maybe... Uh, they fell for it this time because mm. they didn't know. But this is cast in stone. <laughs> mm. This is the same, the same old tactics that, that the, the powers that be yes. have been using to co-opt yeah. members on the other side of the aisle. Eh? Yeah. So being seen to fall for it and having it unravel mm. in such a, a very <laughs> bad way, um, I, I think really down, downplays uh, opposition and 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 the integrity yeah. that they had in the mind of Ugandans. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, I, I still feel that uh, they should have resolved their contradictions internally. Anyway, because they failed to do, it is mm. why you had the formation of a, a, new, a new splinter group, mm. the Alliance for National Transformation. And from my look of things, I, I still think that there is going to be a third force mm. created. If if whatever is is being seen is not resolved amicably, or or maybe there'll be a, another marriage. Uh, <laughs> I think NRM is getting polygamous. Yes. Yeah, let's let's go to. I'll get to you, Honorable Justice, because I want you to listen to what the people have to say. Then you reflect finally. Yeah. Um. Honorable Bisoro, I uh, you've heard what you said, but ordinarily as young people. We were told that political parties about ideas, yeah. that uh, FDC is supposed to have an idea, NRM is supposed to have an idea, UPC is supposed to have an idea. But then, uh, according to what we have seen in our experience, uh, which has been our, our growth time, uh, we see political parties being changed totally from ideas into what could be political kafundas, you know, yeah. where you go and shop a position. <laughs> Is Uganda ready for political parties? The question is, is Uganda ready for political parties? Yes. Um, in my own honest opinion, mm. I would say, yes, we are ready for political parties. Mm. But just like politics is, mm. people define politics differently. Mm. Others will hear it is uh, uh, maybe sharing with a national cake. I don't know in this perspective what is the cake in the FDC. Mm. Uh, politics is about interests. And I, 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 we are really seeing this come to pass. Mm. 
we've been observing what is happening in the FDC. It's not, it's not the first time this is happening. Yes. And that's why sometimes I question the opposition in Uganda, mm. whether or not we actually have opposition. Mm. Because actually opposition is supposed to offer the alternative. Mm. If, if say government is not doing things the right way, they put the other ways, mm. the other better ways which government would actually take course. Mm. But, but may, may, someone would say they're not given the chance. How are they supposed to be given the chance? To go to districts, to mobilize, to teach, teach people, uh, I mean, mobilize around ideas, you know, of alternative ideas. But uh, we saw a lot of limitations during the term. Anyway, I we, just... We, we can't rule that out. Mm. But uh, what I'm saying is that political parties yes. are really not giving us what they're supposed to give us. Mm. It is more of a money haste games. If you have to check across all the political parties, mm. go to the UPC, you hear them fighting at Uganda House. Yeah. When you find out what they are fighting for, it is money. Money. Mm. You go to the DP, you hear issues of marriage, what, what, what is bringing about the marriage? Money. Money. Mm. Recently in the FDC, what is bringing about all that? It's money. So yes. I think we, 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 we are not getting what political parties are supposed to actually offer. Mm. The spirit of uh, nationalism, the, the spirit of democracy, accountability, rule of law, mm. is actually dying out. What people are now majorly focused on mm. is money, how they enrich themselves, how they, how, you know, selfish interests. Yes. It's no longer about nationalism. Yes. Yet those days when uh, opposition was, I remember the days of uh, the reform agenda, mm. the, the, the genuine Bessie days. Mm. Eh? Guys, we really saw guys who are genuine. Mm passionate about the cause, guys that were very nationalistic, mm. guys that would demand for accountability, I think that is fading out. Uh, I have a, uh, just to back up the first question, to follow up the first question I asked, mm. uh, between 1986 and 2006, including the time of the first reform agenda, mm. we had what we call the movement system, mm. right? And in the movement system, there was actually, it was one gov governance system, just like China. Yeah. Then everything must fit in there. So we have, um, we have, you know, we had about three centuries of ministers in that time. Mm. Uh, we had a lot of critique. We had people like Matembe in government. Yeah. Even Besige in 2001 was contesting under the movement system. Yeah. But then we have structure adjustment policies that are, you know, pushed onto the NRM uh, government to be able to bring about multi-party politics. Now, since that time, we have been ineffective. We don't have any power anymore to censure accountability, uh, you know, hold leaders to account and all these things. So do you think that movement system works better for our people than this multi-party system? I really don't think so. Because mm. I think even the movement system can, well, people are there, mm. they can as well be compromised. Mm. This gets to the integrity. One mm. is integrity or the values and principles of a certain group mm. of people. Mm. For as long as we live or we abandon the values and principles mm. and the integrity, it really does not get to whether we have the movement System, system or the multi-party dispensation. Mm. My point is, I think we really need, uh, I don't know whether, the problem is that people at some point yeah. have uh, politicized mm. the, the National Institute. Yes. Uh, the, the, the likes of Changwanzi, Kamuwita. But I feel as a country, we need to have 
a place or an institution that really takes people into ideological orientation. Mm. We get to appreciate who we are, what we really need as a people and as a country yes. to better ourselves, better society, and move the country to greater heights. Mm. So that the young generation, as the youth, the young people that are coming, that are taking space, can really come when we are ready. Mm. Very hard to be compromised. Me, I know of a few people mm. who are very hard to compromise regardless of the situation mm. because they have attained the, the right ideological orientation mm. and uh, they have their principles yes. and they have the integrity. Mm. And this is really something that we really have to, to embark on as a country. But do you think the the current regime uh, is interested in that kind of activity? Because it's not like they have not existed before. We used to have a very strong National Union of Youth Organizations, NUYO, uh, and NUSU as well, doing robust training. I think we also had a service program in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So, but then now we have, and you're part of the National Youth Council, um, that has, I, I don't know, what word to use, what adjective, is it co-opted, whatever, but you know how things are going. Mm. And uh, do you think the, the, the government is really interested? Let me say the regime is really interested in civic education. Uh, the government is interested only that, uh, I don't want to use the word biased. Mm. I do, is there anything like biased civic education, something of the sort? Mm. But really, as a country, this is something that we must not shy away from. Mm. Otherwise, we are headed for bad days. Mm. The country and the government, in my opinion, by the way, for the record, I'm a member of the NRM. Yes. Only that uh, sometimes there are something, we are talking about nation building and yes. Yes. seeing a better society. You have a responsibility. I have a responsibility, yeah. and as a young stakeholder, my opinion, my opinion is that there are things that we have to face. Mm. I know right now, you know when you focus on uh, consolidation of power. Mm. Consolidation of power gets you to do all, even the undoables, for mm. as long as you see yourself in power mm. for the time and period when you deem mm. You want to be there. I think uh, the government is more focused now on uh, consolidating itself mm. in power mm. without, I don't want to say without giving regard, mm. but mm. giving less regard yes. to nation building and the people yes. they live after, after them. Yes. The country they live. My opinion would be that truly really as a country, we have to focus more on having principles and values mm. that unite as a people. Yes. Regardless of whether or not we belong to different political ideologies or mm. political parties. Yes. That as a people, we should have things that bring us together. Mm. That you know what? My other comrade is FDC. I am an RM, but at some point X, there is something that unites us mm. in regard to nation building, peace, security, and all that. Yes. But now, because we are not doing this, mm. that is why we are seeing these things happen in these other parties. Mm. We, we, I, my, my comrade has been talking about uh, the issues in the FDC. Mm. I don't know where the money came from. But as a party still, the leadership in the FDC party had the duty to mobilize for money mm. to, to run a campaign. Mm -hmm. You get? Yes. It's just that people are working under presumptions mm. that maybe the money came from maybe Nakasello, maybe NTV. That is Rumamongari. Mm. And that is what has killed most opposition political parties but but um, it is not 
I mean, it's a hidden a public secret. It's like a, a pregnant woman that <laughs> a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of financial infiltration during elections. Don't you think so? That's what I'm saying. Mm. That is also an assumption, because we saw this gentleman. This gentleman say mm. they were mobilizing resources. Yes. Well, which has reached out, and we all know. Mm. We all know that even these political men of them, including yes. the NOOP, mm. all these political parties get money from well wishers. Mm. That is a fact you cannot dispute. Mm. There are people who don't want, there are people who don't agree with government. Yes. There are businessmen who, who, who during the time for election, they know maybe mm. the leadership might change. Yes. And they want to, to, to ally themselves with maybe another party that they are hopeful that could take. Mm. leadership. You mm. see such people, even genuine honest people, it may not be. Yes. It may not be government. Mm. But now, like I've said, we do not we do not dispute the fact that money came in. Yes. Where money came in from, you and me don't know. Because the people that know don't want to yes. disclose. Mm. You get? But now, how do you approach that question? Mm. For me, I still say it was wrong for the FDC to bring that question into the public mm. media and all that. That was something they were supposed to handle mm. amicably within mm. the party itself. But once you bring it out, it's like, that's why I'll say that, you know, with all due respect, yes. the Honorable Semoju likes politics of the gallery, mm. which to some extent is really not good. Mm. For a party like FDC, an opposition Could you explain party. to our viewers what you mean by politics of the gallery? Populist politics. Mm. Mm? Where you want to be praised by the, by, by the public, yeah, make them laugh, what, what. Mm. But you do not know what you're causing to your own party. The Honorable Semuju and other people that have been breeded by the FDC mm. owe a duty of care to mm. the FDC. Because right now, we do not know whether FDC will remain mm. the way it was. That blow is actually a very serious blow that mm. will take it miles back. Like mm. we said, we shall either see another exodus. Yes. People moving to other. Because they think it's, it's uh, FDC is not taking the right direction. Mm. What I'm saying is that that the rumor in FDC mm. is something that could have been solved mm. within the party. Yes, that would be ideal. That is the ideal. But there's also a chance that there was, you know, irretrievable breakdown in problem-solving systems, you know, within the party. We, we hadn't seen that because we saw that come out in public mm. on camera. Yes. On a platter that on a platform that that it was not really necessary. Mm. So I'm saying, if really these guys have the heart for FDC, mm. they should first get off camera and handle that issue. Okay. Another problem I see in the FDC, yes. that's why I said the problem we've, we've had with opposition is that they come claiming they want to offer the alternative, mm. but they really do not offer the alternative. Mm. We've seen uh, uh, the Honorable Dr. Chiza Vesije saying uh, Museven does not want to retire. Mm. As a person, I do not see the difference between President YK Museven to Buabura and the Honorable Dr. Chiza Vesije. Mm. Some of this fracas that is in the FDC is actually caused by him. Mm. I want to be open on camera. Mm. He does not want to retire. You know, he wants to be a kingmaker of the sort that still wants to make decisions for the party. Mm. Up to now, I do not believe that... What is uh, this other office of yours? Katonga. 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 I'm one of those that don't believe we should have had those offices. Mm. They weakened Najana Akumbi. Mm. That's my opinion. It, those offices or 
that kind of perception having Dr. Kiza retiring, he said he retired. Mm. He, he, he retired, but still wants to keep in mm. active politics. Maybe it's called, we saw, maybe we saw, it's called upon us we saw, uh, an elder we saw, we saw We saw during, we, saw, we were all active during elections mm. and uh, that time. Yes. The party, that is FDC, had a Muriat yes. engineer as a presidential flag bearer for the party. Mm. But the kingmaker did not have support for the party presidential flag bearer. Mm. If I am wrong, at least I am reliably informed mm. Dr. Chiza did not support mm. Engineer Amoriat for for what for for presidency mm. and that's how issues yes. starts to come in. Yeah. You know, as a party, you have to have what you call collective responsibility. Mm. That once a decision is taken as a party, a party has agreed so and so is our flag bearer, regardless of whether you had reservations yes. or issues yes. with that person. You have to carry along with them. Yes. Thank or else it is going to be what We saw that during uh, this uh, previous uh, by-election for the NRM. Mm. Where was it? Oyam. 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 Mm -hmm. The party took different positions. Yes. And the results were not good. Mm. So as a party, more especially a party in opposition, they should learn to agree. Mm. Kiza Vesige, as a kingmaker of FDC, should give a chance to these guys to take leadership of that party. Yes. Should only come in to guide. Yeah, thank you, Honorable. I also do not agree with him, by the way. Thank you, Honorable Bissau. For, um, for having taken those issues for a press conference. Yes. He should have called those people yes. home as a kingmaker to resolve issues. Thank you for those. Thank you so much. And, and I'm sure uh, Justice will be taking back a lot of advice. To, I don't know whether you're going to Katonga or Najananku. <laughs> you will tell us. <laughs> you will say both. Yes, uh, over to you, Honorable Mucho. Um, it, a few years ago, uh, the president said uh, we soon will have no opposition uh, in Uganda. And we have seen uh, strategic co opting parties, starting with, I think at the time was, uh, first it was DP. No. UPC, uh, when we saw Akena signing a cooperation agreement, then we saw Nobat Mao. We have also seen Mbavazi with the president recently. You know, uh, I don't know about <laughs> Mr. Tumukunde. <laughs> yeah, but um, what we are seeing at FDC now is it a manifestation of what the president was, and why? Why is it that? Why is it that? Uh, why is this a strategic interest of NRM or of the president to kind of take away, you know, political party opposition? Not political opposition, but political party opposition. Okay, I think, um, once again, thank you for the opportunity to speak to the young people in Uganda. Uh, student, as, as, as we are criticizing the president, we should also know that he's the president, at the same time the chairman of the party. Yes. The NRM party, mm. where it's one of his number one role and responsibilities to mobilize for the party. Yes, yes. And uh, he has agents, he has the secretariat that is there to mm. mobilize for the party. So, him trying to get uh, other political parties mm. to join the NRM mm. is also good because yes. that is what the party has sent him to do. Mm. That is why he's voted as the chairman of the party. Mm. If I am supporting him as the chairman of the party, I'm supporting him to do such responsibilities okay. Okay, of yeah. getting people towards the NRM. Mm. So, as the NRM uh, party, we thank the president for such mm. uh, tremendous efforts. And there's nothing wrong with playing politics. There's nothing wrong with playing the politics, yeah. but also, as the president is doing that, it is also the role of other political parties that are being bought off, that are being 
that are being <laughs> infiltrate NRM. <laughs> infiltrate NRM or make or strengthen themselves. Yes. yes. Make a counter. I person. want I want to, <laughs> to, to, to give my opinion yes. on why the FDC fracas is coming out. Mm. In my opinion, my thought is that uh, when you hear them speak, it's like as if they knew that the money has come mm. from the time of the elections. Because they tell you that they received the money, it was taken to Dr. Chiza Vesige's home. Mm. He was questioning where the money came from, and they knew it, they even took it to the elders. What the problem is, it seems the side of Semuju and uh, the Rukwagos mm. are not interested in the party elections happening. Mm. The elections that are organized that are supposed to be organized. Yeah, ongoing. Mm -hmm. And that that is why you see that Semuji is saying Amuria wants wants the elections to happen and he takes the party along with him to the president. Mm. But you also know that Semu Nandara is, a, is an active secretary general. Mm. Amuria is an active president of, F of the FDC. Mm. If the agreement is to take FDC to NRM, he will do it right now. Mm. Why wait for after elections? It is crystal clear that this has come out of a disagreement between should the elections happen or not. Mm. So in the elections, when, when the, a certain part overpowers the other, mm. the other looks for now ways of how we can overpower mm. him with propaganda mm. or with information that we have known. For example, I may disagree with you. Yes. Should he move outside or should not? Mm. If you overpower me that you are moving outside, I will try and have a justification as to why you want to, to go outside. outside. Yes, yes. So, Semuji is trying to use the money mm. as evidence that these people got the money. Mm. But the, the, the point is, why if Semuji knew that the elections would happen right now, yes. why does he think that Inanda is so interested in organizing elections so that he can take them to... to I can take the party to FDC. Mm. I think this is an internal disagreement that has been brought to, to the public unnecessarily. Mm. Someone will say that, okay, uh, what if negotiations happened indoors and they were not able to agree? Let me tell you, you've seen disagreements in families. Mm. And you see when you go to these um, home care facilities, when, yes, you go yes. to, when you go to Butarika, you find men that are there, that are there dying mm. just because of silence. Mm -hmm. A part is like a family. Mm. Some people have, have belong to the part to the extent that something bad can happen and you keep quiet. Yes. Because you know when it gets to the public, even when you disagree, for example, uh, I can disagree with you. Yes. But in my opinion, I, I will know that if I disagree with you, I will bring this to the part, mm. to the public. Both of us shall be shall be disadvantaged. Yes. So what I will do, I will choose to play the wise part. Mm. So what we are seeing here is that whether Nandara is not wise, whether he, ate the, he took the money or mm. not, mm. but Semuju has also played the part of, uh, with, due, with all due respect, mm. he's not playing the wise part. Mm. Because if he loves FTC, he would rather die when he's quiet mm. than letting the party do it. But Mitchell, I think um, Semuju has made it clear yes. that for him, his main thing is removing the dictatorship. Mm. Uh, paraphrasing him, I mean quoting him, that it doesn't matter the party. So for him, his principle is not to build FDC. The principle is to remove the, the regime. So this is, uh, that, that is just another problem. And that is what he answers when people say, are you trying to move to NUP? No. Then, then, then we should. Uh, it brings me back to the question that you asked. Um, mm. Was it the Honorable yes. uh, Chairperson here? But is Uganda ready for political parties? Yes. If Semuju, a recognizable figure in opposition, makes such a statement, mm. Mm. that my, my 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 focus is not building the FDC, is removing a dictator, mm. then you are not ready for political parties. Mm. It means these are just pressure groups, mm. just there to pressurize the government. <laughs> To pressurize the regime <laughs> and make sure that maybe the president is out. Then it means if the president is out, FDC is no more. Mm. What is causing all this? That Samuji believes if Nandara goes to NRM, FDC is gone. Mm. 
Mm. It's caused by one thing, and, and this cuts across all parties, NRM, NUP, FDC. Mm. Individualization of political parties. Mm. I've tried to observe what is done in the US and other countries. Yes. That, that we claim that have democracy, and we also think we have the same democracy. Mm. Trump is not the sole, the sole leader of the Republican Party. Mm. He's actually look at, not the leader. He's not the leader. Yes. When he, even when he was the, the flag bearer, even when he was the president, mm. Biden is not the lead, is, is not the sole uh, decision maker of the, of the, the Democrats. Of the Democrats. Mm. If you buy off Biden, you're not buying off uh, the Democratic Party. Yes. So if we had a situation here uh, whereby political parties stand on its structures, mm. not an individual, for example, when you go to Kamwacha tomorrow and you pick Rubongoya and, and Bob Wayne, NUP is done. Yes. When you go to FDC and you pick Vesige and you pick Nandara, FDC is done. Mm. So what we are seeing right now is that when you individualize political parties, you, you're putting them at a high risk. Mm. But if that individual gets disagreements with mm. a certain individual in the same party, or if that individual is given... Uh, is given an opportunity that is much big, mm. the party is done. Yes. If we would set structures, and this goes to, to, to we, the young people, yes. the elderly have benefited from mm. these political parties. Mm. But we should also be able to see that this is not good enough. And us who are growing in these political parties, uh, the uh, Honorable Justices that are growing through the FDC, uh, the Honorable Hill is going through the New Uganda, it is our role to shape our political parties mm. to the future that we want them to be. Yes. And I'm telling you, if we still uh, be comfortable when the political parties are, are being individualized, we are at a very but, high risk. Um, Mucha, um, there is an argument that every product needs a marketplace, right? Mm. Mm. So to sell fish, whatever, you need a marketplace. Similarly, for a political party to sell its ideas, like renewed party and uh, it needs a marketplace and for that marketplace to be there one there has to be access you know uh, to to the general Uganda NRM wins largely on mobilizing the rural population yeah. there has to be access to 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 these other political parties to go and talk to people because the renewed party has to come and talk to us tell us this is the agenda this is what we do and uh, we maybe if they interest me more than this uh, FDC, I will go with them. So that space, there's an argument that's been shrunk in Uganda. Two, Uganda's political system is a winner takes all. So even when the even if assuming NRM would allow other parties to mobilize, which from the last cycle we saw was didn't happen, NUP was largely halted here, and other parties uh, also financing. So how do we finance parties, for example? How can Renewed Agenda be able to reach all universities? Maybe support a capable leader like Agaba to go and discuss ideas at, at these places. So for purposes of, the, of debate, there's also that thing that the parties are following individuals because there's no marketplace for, for, the, for the ideas. Okay, uh, I, I think what ha is happening in Uganda is just crystal clear mm. that we are not we are not ready for political parties uh, for political party dispensation because. Do you prefer the movement see, system? I, I prefer the movement system because mm. even when this is a hoax, even when you're saying that the FDC is available, if you're not allowing it to go and and have consultations, if mm. you're not allowing the NUP to go and make consultations, mm. then it is crystal clear you're not you're not acknowledging it as a political mm. party. Mm. Because it has a right to go and, and mobilize. Mm. The only problem is that when they go to mobilize, there are there are other rules that must be followed. Yes. For example, the Public Management Order Act. Yes. If you're going to mobilize, maybe in, in Ginger, you're, you're requested to organize a hall where people will go and sit. Maybe your delegates you you requested. But what happens when these people maybe are going to Ginger? Mm. You receive a boy and get mm. out of the car, stand mm. up. He yeah. will have his uh, his public address system. Well, this he will is make a stopover. Mm. He will make a stopover in a certain uh, city center. Mm. And two, I think why the government does that is you've seen you've seen scenarios whereby some of the political leaders in these political parties mm. have made it very clear. Last time I was on media and saw a statement from uh, one of these loud loud members of, of the NUP mm. saying that. We shall take Museveni whether by election or by civil disobedience. Mm. 
as a security minister when you hear such a statement mm. and the same group is in a, a certain city center mm. with a public address system with over 200 people in that city center what are you supposed to do mm. when the country is having 45 students die just mm. because of maybe adf and other things we have not yet confirmed the reason of the death yes what do you what do you do as a government mm. these political parties are requesting they are to be given the rights that they are supposed to enjoy. But mm. when they are given these rights, surely we have seen other political parties have access. Mm. The NT the NT can move and, and, and have its consultations. You've been seeing them. But when these other pressure groups, not political parties, because of how they behave is not of a political party, mm. they deviate from what they are supposed to do. Yes. No one can refuse Bob Wayne from having a meeting in our day. We have seen them have conferences. We have seen them have retreats. I see them having retreats almost every every after three months. Mm. And they are not they are, they are not stopped from having these retreats. Mm. But the wrong thing is saying we are having consultations in Ginja. Are you seeing the leader of opposition traverse the country? Mm. Is he being stopped? Mm. No. You say you are you are supposed to be in Ginja. But when, as you're going to Jinja, what is the public address system for that you, you're putting on, 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 your, on, on your vehicle? Mm. You're, out, you're in an open roof, you stand up, first talk to the people and people converge. Mm. What do you want the government to respond? It's all business. And you're the same person who has said, an election is not taking the dictator. We shall go by civil disobedience. So I think that's why government does such a thing. Mm. So I think what political parties should do is have a discussion with the government. And mm. that is what why iPod, iPod is there. Mm. But we have seen the political parties uh, disown iPod. For mm. example, the, the largest political party in Uganda right now is not a member of iPod. Mm. So mm. how do you how it, how does it request for financing mm. from from the iPod? We have seen the honorable no but now try mm. to they got the money. Try to negotiate for, for an increment in the financing. Mm. It is in spaces like iPod that we think uh, people should people should d d debate on what is government doing to these political parties, what is what are our rights. And I think the president is someone that can really understand mm. if you're in such spaces. Mm. But what I'm saying is there's a lot of uh, difference between the government and other political parties. Yes. Uh, Honorable Court, I, I'm sure you're very well informed and you, and you follow up politics of all other regions. Yes. You've seen Congress congressmen of the Republican Party yes. come to the to the, to the White House of, 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 of Biden mm. and they have discussions. Here in Uganda when, when an MP meets the president he has been sold off. Mm. Yeah. How do you expect for example <laughs> how do you have a, 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 a parliament whereby Members of parliament cannot discuss with the president of the country. Mm. Who is like the chief account? Who is like the chief executive officer mm. of the country? So all these things happen because of the too much difference. Yes. Between 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 the, uh, between these political parties and yes. the government. Yes. If if these political parties, uh, if these politicians had been given a space mm. that uh, Asuman Yusariro can go and meet. Uh, uh, among that, Asumani Wasari, Honorable Asumani Wasari, can go and meet the president mm. and tell him the people of Jinja, the people of, of, of Rurui are, are having this issue. Yes. And I think such and such an avenue can help, help solve it. And the president can listen. Yes. But if Asumani Wasari today wakes up and meets the president, he's now in our yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, <laughs> Honorable you. Mucho. Yes. And, uh, over to you, Honorable Justice. You've heard what our colleagues have said. Uh, would like to hear from you an inside perspective of what's going on at FDC, but also in the light of uh, what I wouldn't love to repeat because they said say their words best, but in the light of what our core panelists here have, have also stated on the matter. Yeah, you're most welcome. Yeah, thank you so much, my brother Okot. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, it is so unfortunate that... Uh, we are having uh, such discussions on the party that I was once associated with 
and uh so you're no longer just for the no. record uh i mean in orientation okay, okay orientation when i was growing up i i used to to know that uh fdc is one mm. of the uh, is one of the best parties that have the nicest o- orientation yes and i want us to believe that yes because if you look at the country that we have now the uganda that we have yes we are so much depending on uh the FDC orientation. Mm. Take an example of the speak of parliament mm. and very many people here that we know that uh, are in the government now. Mm. So and FDC has been acting as the the oasis of 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 the country. Yes. Whereby the the president looks around and feels like there is a very big space that is actually missing and mm. he thinks of going to that oasis to getting that water to mm. come and you know mm. irrigate the country with mm. a knowledge that is oriented from the FDC. Yes. So and it is so unfortunate that now we are having discussions of of uh money in such a in such a party. It is a party that uh should be it is a party that should be fronting democracy other than anything else. Yes. And it is also unfortunate that we are having uh, such discussions of money in public. Mm. This is something that should be should have been handled very nicely in uh, the architecture of the party yes. you see the challenge is that we we are facing in the party uh, in parties here in Uganda mm. as my brother here said that uh, we are not ready for the for the parties in Uganda mm. and this is where the challenge comes in if you're ready for the party one you have to create the architecture of the party mm. that is that should be the starting point mm. and what is the architecture you shouldn't bring the architecture of the party uh in the names of individuals as he said you know and that is the challenge that we are facing in the country because let's say you having a, a one or quota running a certain particular party mm. or maybe you representing a very group number of people yes. and something has happened to you and maybe these people don't know these people and then you're going to be the image of those people yes. and anything that you do is going to reflect what the other people are doing mm. so what is it what what should be done is that uh, Okay it, it is already in public. Yes. So now how should we handle it? One first come back it is honorable samuju it is honorable nandara first come back get a table. Mm. The tables are not expensive as as we always hear that. Mm. They are not expensive. Mm. Sit and discuss. They are men they are big people. Yes. They shouldn't be they, they shouldn't fight. Mm. You know? And another challenge is living out the youth you know in every organization in the country mm. or in the world mm. where the youth is uh where the youth uh, are not fronting a particular cause um, i can assure you that cause doesn't uh, succeed 90 percent mm. so the challenge is you're telling the other party that is actually it is not involving the youth into the structure or maybe into the discussions that they are having on top of the table mm. but then use it as an advantage if it is fdc first come to people first come to the youth what are they saying yes you know before taking out something into the public yes first call groups of people here and there have yes. structures that are going to be there for long don't just come just because you are an individual and you think you're just going to leave but but honorable justice don't you think fdc is just demoralized because um we know the fdc of the 2000s starting mm. from 2006 which was a, a contested many could contest you know mm. the result uh that formidable formidable fdc of their mongs or, or dongoto and bcj and all the i mean he he gave a long list of them mm. uh, uh, but, yeah. up to around 2016 you know uh since then we see a much uh, you know less i believe kiza bcj almost didn't come in 2016 and then now in 2021 it didn't come at all Do you think there's a party that has just lost morale? Because if I think at some point FTC was the FTC we knew. The mm. FTC you said mm. oriented you. Mm. Yes. Exactly that is actually that's that's one of the things that I was actually trying to to say here. Yes. You see when you bring a, a party on an individual basis. Yes. Those are the challenges that you're likely to face. Mm. When you know that you're creating an architecture of the party there is one thing that you can never forget and there is one thing that you can never take for granted those are the youth mm. when you're going which pakami 
Mm. Are you mobilizing for the party? Mm. Are you giving it your best for the party? Or you're just leaving the party? You know? And uh, take an example of Kiza Besija. I think he has done it at some point. Because mm. if you were to look at most of the FDC members that are around now, they are his students. Mm. But now it was the responsibility of those students that he actually oriented to mm. also orient. Mm. There is a time when I was running for my good presidency elections. I happened to to go to the prison to to have a one-on-one -on -one with uh, Dr. Kizabesija. I think that was my first time. Yes. And there is something that he told me. He, he was actually telling me that, uh, that this country that we, we, we are in right now, Yes. I think he was answering the same question. We are not ready for the parties. Mm. Whether FDC, whether DPC, whether DP, whether UPC, whether NRM, I think we should come back together and come with an idea that we can sell out. Mm. We come with an idea that we can actually build to an extent that it is going to attract very many people. Yes. You see, everyone that builds, everyone that uh, creates an empire, starts small, you know? and keeps on building, keeps on building. You know, I'm an engineer, but there is no way you can sell a house yes. that is not looking good. And you convince someone that actually it has strong concrete within, you know? Mm. How is it going to be convinced? First, create the image of the house very mm. nice, and then the person is going to get convinced. Mm. So what am I saying here? If the party is Right now, we are facing the challenges of, of then. Mm. If by then they knew that such problems would come, they would be able to have an architecture that would actually take the party for more than, mm. for very many years to yes. stand. Yes. Get, but that's, that's a challenge that we are facing. Take an example of this uh, part you so-called Arango that is happening in the FDC. Yes. You've not seen youth taking part in that Arango. I don't no, know no, if no, you've no. seen it. No. So that is a challenge that I'm actually telling you. That is where we go wrong. Yes. And if it was made in a way that maybe the youth are actually taking some of the positions yes. in the party, I think some of the challenges would surface anywhere. Yes. Because actually, this party, these parties are, are losing a, a, a point of orientation. And that is something that matters very, very, yes. very much. Yes. Because what are you telling people? If, you, if you've called Mr. Justice to come and join you, Mm. How are you orienting him? Are you following up? Yes. You're not following up. Yes. He's likely to be to divert to any other press. Yeah. You get so I think we should I think the party should really consider that so much. Yes. And I also find it so unfortunate that people can actually go to public minus sitting down. People that are actually we are looking at. Mm. Now if you have a mentor and you see a mentor is handling a certain thing in the other way, you'd actually think of the same. Yes. Maybe if, if it comes to your way, yes. you have to also handle it that way because you're going to say, this is my mentor and I grew up looking up to him. Yes. So why not me? I think I can also do that. Yes. Yeah. So I think that is where we're losing yeah. it. Yeah. Th thank you very much, Honorable Justice. And we'll start from you in the second segment because there's more that uh, we need to pick out, uh, especially concerning the FDC. And to our dear viewers, that's our first segment for today. Uh, stay with us as we continue to discuss issues around the Forum for Democratic Change, but also the performance of the, of the government of Uganda uh, in the midterm, as we assess them at the midterm basis. Digital rights are those human rights and legal rights that allow individuals to access, use, create and publish digital media or to access and use computers, other electronic devices and telecommunication networks. Digital rights include a right to freedom of expression, information and communication through technology, a right to privacy and data protection, a right to credit for personal works, a right to universal and equal digital access, a right to identity, a right to anonymity, a right to be forgotten and a right for protection of minors among others. The state's digital rights are frequently violated through various unfair actions, for example, blockage of websites and social networks, theft of credentials, unauthorized use of people's data for personal gain, privacy intrusion, online censorship, arrests and intimidation of online users, internet blockages, and a proliferation of laws and regulations that undermine the potential of technology to drive social, economic, and political development worldwide. It is hence every citizen's responsibility to respect rights of other digital users and to speak 
speak out or report to the responsible parties when one's rights are violated. Welcome back to yet another segment of this uh, Youth Roundtable discussion where we're discussing issues around the Forum for Democratic Change and on to it straight, uh, I'll go to Honorable Agaba. Uh, Honorable, we as we I think in the first segment we all agreed that we need to come together uh, and foster a way forward or look behind or use the past to foster a way forward. But the main thing is uh, we need to come together and more important than political parties is us, the Ugandans, and especially us, whose future is invested in this country. In the light of the FDC issues, uh, how do you think this, the youth should, like, how do you think this affects the youth, uh, especially as young growing politicians, in terms of perspective, but also in terms of our democracy, which we are going to live in for the next uh, 60 years, of God willing. Sure. So before I, I bring in the aspect of the youth, yes, I, I felt it better to, to make a rejoinder on what my colleagues had been expressing yes, yes, earlier yes. on. Now, there came up an issue of uh, whether Uganda, or actually generally as Africa, yes. we were ready for multi-party political, political system. When? Because the, the, cha are, the, the challenges you see... The, the question was yes. whether as Uganda or Africa. We are ready. Well, I, I, I beg to disagree. Yes. <laughs> because the challenges we face in our political parties here are akin to challenges faced by very many other political parties or mm. very many other countries running a multi-party political dispensation mm. elsewhere in Africa. Yes. Why? Because um, here you have people that are literally bigger than institutions. Mm. You, you grow a person, a person is the founder and they, they grow this uh, historicism. It's called the historicism syndrome. Mm. That where were you when we started this? Mm -hmm. You do not have a say. You just of, of yesterday. <laughs> mm, fight. Your pizza eaters. Yeah, you get it. Mm. Yeah, so but that's, I think, the challenge that we, we, we don't have. And it, it does not even apply to political parties alone. Even in business, founders of businesses here die with their businesses. Eh? Mm. When this man of St. Lawrence passed on, the school has not remained the same. Yes. Professor Mchiv. We had Zimwe also. We had Andrew Kasaga Zimwe. Mm. He died with Zimwe construction. Mm. So, so it, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, a, it's a problem that, that's African that I think we need to deal with, <laughs> I think, systemically. Mm. Now, I would want to give before I come to the issue of how what is taking place in political parties affects yes. the youth. Eh? Yes, yes. A, bi a bit of historical context. Eh? Mm. You see, we never had political parties here in Uganda mm. until the pre-independence period. Mm. So, between 19... Uh, when, when we had independence ushered into Uganda, uh, between 1962 and 1964, mm. we had the biggest crossover mm. of members from the DP to the UPC. Yes, yes. And it was, it was, it was actually uh, epitomized by the crossover of the leader of opposition himself, mm. Basil Vateringaya. Yes. From DP to UPC. <laughs> mm. Now, that, that shows you the mayhem that we have whenever we lead a, a multi-party dispensation. Mm. So, we had I Amin mean, come in and the political party suspended and we had come, at least politically. <laughs> For the years, sure. <laughs> yeah, politically, <laughs> politically, <laughs> yes. we, we didn't have chaos being brought about by differences in, in shades of opinion. Mm. Now, then we came to the 1980 election. Yes. You see, the challenge then there was, do we go for the elections in parties or under the umbrella? Mm. And still people opted for, for parties. Yes. Yes, and it was out of that election that we had, that we had a, a five-year-long war. Mm. Out of results so, of an election, a multi-party election. Mm. So, once the, the, the movement was ushered in from 1986 to 2006, we had come because political parties had been put to a bias. Mm. Yes, and then multiple party dispensation came in 2006, and, and, and we are back to the, the same old drama that we had whenever we went for elections in parties. Mm. So, for me, I believe that. 
see then are in to passion force mm. they are leftist mm. they might have dropped the leftist economic tendencies yes because they were choke held yes by IMF and the World Bank mm. but they've never dropped the leftist political approach mm. the economics that they agreed they had to globalize and open up yes yes but with the politics in, in why do you think it's called national resistance movement party mm. and not national resistance party mm. Dija, it's a party, de facto, it's a movement. Mm. Movements have one leader, <laughs> mm. an ayatollah, yes. what you call an ayatollah. Yes, or chairman Mao. <laughs> yes, an ayatollah or chairman Mao. Mm. Yes, that, 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 that gets to, to, to determine who does what, mm. when. Mm. So, I think it's a challenge we have. And, and because the, the, the Vuchupai Uganda, I, I don't think what what you see is about to change anytime soon. Eh? Mm. So, and and even in UPC, when Obote was in exile in the seventies, he would throw orders here, and people in Uganda would listen. Mm. Even past Museveni uh, coming in, when we had um, these uh, constituent assembly elections, mm. he ordered he was in, in exile, but yeah. he would order people here that you boycott those elections, mm. the constituent assembly elections. Yes. And they didn't. They, they, they wouldn't attend until 2006 when the wife, Mama Mamiria Obote, participated mm. when we had ushered in political party. So I don't think political parties is our thing. Systems, no. Ours here is persons. Mm. Yes. Um, and and, I, and that's, that's my opinion. Respectfully. Yes. All right. That's very, very interesting. But um, even where we have seen, I think it's very important to note that uh, even where we have seen, uh, you know, revolutionary governments, the most important thing always is, is it, does the government work for the people, right? Because in China, uh, they, you have seen the, the transformation, the Human Development Index, but also money that people have in their hands. The Chinese life has been totally transformed. Uh, in Iran, under Ayatollah, you know, I, apart from propaganda, I encourage us to read into Iran, it's actually a country that works for most of its people. Uh, in Chuba, they have a lot of economic challenges, but the health is, 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 is world class. Mm. The health system, they even export health mm. to other countries. So I think uh, important to note, despite of, is that uh, even whether it's, it's political party or individual, it has to work for the... Sure. Um, it's just that, you see, look, how much does the government you talk about collect mm. in terms of domestic revenue mm. about compared six. to its wish list, its budget? Mm. Yes. So you find that the basket of, of, of what you call the resource envelope is too small to, to extend to Ugandans all these essential social services that mm. you demand. Mm. Yes. So what do you do? You see, and, and these guys, these, these, are, these are war generals. You see, in war, what, what is the operating situation? Mm. Yes, now get yourself to fit into it. Mm. Yeah, de deal with what is. What ought to be, we shall, <laughs> we shall deal with when we get there. Mm. So, simply create kingpins, uh, patronage. Uh, you, you get the elite in each of these regions because the people in the different regions listen so much mm. to mm. the elite there. Yeah, co-opt them. Mm. Run a patronage system. It is... It's what fits into what you're able to collect as resources from your country. Mm. Yes. So I think that's, that's where they, 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 they are pragmatic and, okay. and I've kept that there again. No, that is, that is interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like to bring in uh, Honorable Mitchell. Uh, in the light of what he has said you know, about the country, but also um, the question for this particular run was um, seeing what is going on at FDC. Um, you try to hint on it, but I want to give you more time. Uh, how does this affect the youth? Especially this is going to be our country for 50, 60, 70 years, depending on how God blesses each of us. Um, how should we approach this? I know we should not fight, we should not just fight the wars of our elders, but also mind our future and the future of our children. Because even if you're an NRM, security is not just... Uh, you know, a big car and a lead car, it's, it's the prosperity of all your neighbors. Yeah, so... I think um, you, you bring in the question of the youth 
in, 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 yes. in general, our generation. Yes. I think it is it is quite uh, time that we we sat down as as the youth and yeah. understand the real issues of our time. Mm. What 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 do we want in our time, and what favors us politically in our time? The FDC, the NRM, uh, NU, uh, the UPC mm. was formed on what was favoring them at their time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And right now it is different. Yes. Right now, growth politically may not be necessarily about fighting with justice. Mm. We can actually cooperate and, and further our political agenda and further our political interests. Mm. Those days, it was maybe out of fight. It was maybe be out of difference. Mm. So I think it is an, it is high time we sat down and discussed what is our time requesting for. Yes. What is needed the generational our cause? It, yes. What is our generational cause? If our generational cause is abusing ourselves, we go and abuse ourselves. Mm. If our generational cause is sitting down and and, and, and work together, then we should go and and, and do the same. Mm. I think also the political parties, wherever you belong, in all parties, yes. the youth have been taken up. By, by the elderly mm. and what the elderly believe in. Yes. Mm. I think there is no common consensus within the young people, even in their political parties, to say, mm. okay, are we drafting what favors us in our time? Mm. In the NRA, when the elders are making the, uh, the manifesto mm. and when they are making the strategy, they do not amend the strategy according to what is in at this moment. Mm. The structure of the NRA was made 20 years ago. Mm. But the youth are very comfortable in, 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 in that manner. Yes. I think it is also better in the NRM that we sit down as young people, as uh, my chairman, we belong to the same party. Mm. We sit down and discuss what is happening in NRM. Is it favoring us as mm. the young people? Is it favoring us? Because if we don't, we shall also be wiped out. Yes. So I want I want to show you the effect of what is happening in FDC to the young people in yes, FDC yes, yes. and the politicians in FDC. Mm. It is going to be so hard for the FDC to bring back its image. Mm. Right in 2026, we are going to have me genuine members of the FDC aspiring mm. under the FDC flag. Yes. And the public is considering them as NRM leaning. Mm. That is the scar that Semuju has left on the FDC. Mm. That whoever is going to be in the FDC, if you have an opening, let's say because we have independence, yes. if I am an FDC flag bearer in Iwondibuju and I have an opponent who is maybe an independent mm. and maybe he was in FDC leaning, you know what is going to happen? Mm. Because this FDC leaning independent wants to get votes of those that I believe and subscribe to the FDC, is going to characterize the flag bearer. As NRM leaning. Mm. Because maybe he's a friend to Nandara, maybe because he's a friend to Semuju, maybe because he's a friend to just to just us. Yes. We are going to have FDC flag bearers characterized as NRM people. Yes. And what the common Uganda and the ordinary Uganda is going to be seeing, whoever is going to be coming under the FDC flag, yes. there's going to be that question. Are you NRM or are you FDC? Yes. Mm. So what Semuju has caused the FDC is that there is no people are never going to trust FDC again. Mm. There is always going to be that question in the in the in the, in the people's perspective. Yes. That what are you FDC or are you NRM? So what is the effect to the ordinary Uganda? Yes. That as we have pertinent issues in Uganda right now, mm. as forty five students are dying, mm. mind you. The very day we had we had we had a, a talk show of, of Nanda and and, and Semuju and when we were having those press conferences, you are aware that we had a school yes. where twenty five students were poisoned. Was that Nagalama? In Nagalama. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know what was taking the headline mm. is FDC. Seven mm. billion that was taken in twenty twenty one. Yes. As we still have a question of forty five students who were killed and mm. Now, there is no report right now. Yes. What we are focused on, you have you have a flag, a, a, a former general of Macau University, you have a chairperson of, of Mundibuji, which is close to maybe that side of the West, yes. to Kasese. You have such an able you, you, Ugandan, you have, you have me, but the discussion is FPC. Yes. Mm. We have all been student leaders. Mm. The discussion is not about, you have a speaker of the university, 
like Makere. Yes. The discussion is not about his fellow students who were poisoned. Mm. The discussion is about FDC or, or the medical who are mm. You have you, we have students who graduated in the, who who finished their school in June. Mm. We are in July. They do not have license to work. Yes. Do you know how they are surviving right now? No. I have seen them become counselors. Yesterday I was I was going to work and, and met one of one of, of the medical students, very bright. He was going to Chiku. A country is losing Ebo. Do you know what that student what is going to happen if he takes more three months when he's still in Chiku? He's not going to get back to the medical field. Even, even when you, you employ him in terms. Mm. But the discussion has deviated from the key pertinent issues yes. to discussing FDC fracas of money and so on. So if yes. someone you Uganda. really loved Uganda, this he could not let the country in such a, a critical time. Mm. When we have the, the, the regime time, we are supposed to discuss the manifesto. I will appreciate uh, civic space for Scheduling that time that we can at least discuss what the government has done for the country. Yes. When you see Samuji talk, he has made it very similar. It is about comedy, mm-hmm. like as Ofono Pondo said. Yes. He's running, but one time he will run past his place. Mm. I saw I saw him individualize state house, cutting the cut the budget of state house as 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 funds that are supposed to fund for people, the mm. president and, and and his and his family. Not forgetting that set house has offices, has officers, has people that stay there mm. for all their lifetime. Yes. But what we are discussing right now is not actually important. Mm. So the effects of FDC chaos is not only on the FDC. It's also on the ordinary Ugandan where you see uh, discoveries of, 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 of health facilities mm. that are funded but they are not actually there. In in Rohamia, mm. but they don't actually exist. In exist. In Intunga, mm. I saw someone saying that we, we are given an ambulance, but it is actually just a bed. It is not even. It is not an ambulance. Mm. It is in a certain hard constructed. Yes. It is in a scrap. Yes. But that is not a discussion we are having yes. right now. Yes. So as we are concentrating on the FDC, what Semuju has done to Uganda is that he has made us. Yes. Forget of the very many things that we are supposed to discuss. Yes. Yes. As, when we have commodities come in Uganda, mm. they are not verified because UNBS is mm. is having a lot of corruption. When even the chairman of the board says what is happening in any UNBS is total total <laughs> corruption. Mm. The executive director of UNBS. And these these are the things uh, that eventually cause things like the poisoning. Yes, because yes. Because the, the one supposed to maintain yes. standards. Yes, yes. We are not discussing such things. Yes. And that is the effect of having yeah. such political parties yeah. not managing. Thank government. you, Hona Romich. I want us to get some time to discuss the, the manifesto. But uh, I wanted to give you just some time. He will come in with the manifesto. Yeah. I wanted to give you some time to, to wrap up, uh, especially on a way forward. What's the way forward for FDC youth like you? Uh, what would you tell other youth? Uh, within the FDC, and maybe uh, neutral, uh, you know, young people who would still love to be a part of the dream of the FDC of 2006. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I want us to, one, to understand that it is uh, historical that this government that we have right now wasn't brought because of a political party. Yes. I want us to know that. Yes. And I also want us to understand how many times have we tried to achieve this, yes. to take over the power. How many times have we done that? Yes. And then we need to get back and know that we actually need the movement more than anything else. Mm. We need to have a movement. Mm. Whereby I know that I have a friend, Awan Okochi. I'm going okay. to sit you down and I'll tell you, do you know what? This is the Uganda that we have. What are you contributing to the agenda? What are you contributing to this expedition that we are having? Mm. And you clearly tell me that, you know, I think I can do this. And we should also understand with the youth that uh, being youthful is, is actually power. Yes. You know, we've had uh, these, uh, I'm going to call them adults. Mm. They always tell us that we are the leaders of tomorrow. 
Mm. But when is tomorrow? Yes. Every time they are going to tell you, you are the lead of tomorrow. Just stay there. Just stay there. You are the lead of tomorrow. You're getting 31 and you're the lead of tomorrow. When is going to be that? Mm. And they also tell you that, you know what? And you see the politics of Uganda has now been monetized. monetized. Mm. Like, if you don't have money, you're not going anywhere. And I think this is a generation that we should write. We should have a generation well knowing that we need a generation where politics is not going to be all about who has the money. But the politics is going to be about who has the ideas mm. to the people. That is a generation that we have. That's a generation that we should actually look for in mm. ourselves. Yes. So if we are the leaders of tomorrow, we should, we should start sharpening ourselves as the leaders of tomorrow. Yes. You know? And no one should actually tell us that we are the leaders of tomorrow. It is us. Mm. Me, you, we sit down and we discuss. You yes. know what? I think the security minister, the minister of security is not working out things well because we've been attacked by the IDF in Kasese. Yes. Where were they? Yes. So you come and think of that. We are the youth that have actually attended more trainings in different fields, in different mm. sectors, in dockets. So what should we use that for? It is now our time that we need to rise up and know what we need yes. because we are not going to be taken by the propaganda. And at least we are so lucky. We are among the lucky people that have gone through school. Yes. That orientation is also enough. Yes. You know, you're not going to be. You're not going to accept propaganda anyhow. Yes. You're going to take your time, sit into that thing, and understand what is the genesis, and what is the revelation, and then you start working out another revelation as the question that you've just asked me. Yes. So if then, if if this is facing such challenges as now, so. What should we do? We are not taking part. We are not, they are not hearing our say. Mm. So what should we do? We sit down and we discuss that. Yes. That is the question that we should be asking ourselves. Yes. And a, a youth who is in DP, a youth who is in NRM, shouldn't look at FDC youth mm. and actually laugh at them. Mm. It is some, FDC was at some point a bigger party. Mm. Than any. We had UPC. Yes. Why is it? We expect changes to come. So yes. an NRM youth right now shouldn't be looking at a political party, but should rather be looking at the generation that we are going to have in the future. Mm. Sit, let us sit down, come, come up with the resolutions that are going to benefit our generation. Yes. Not the resolutions that are going to actually support the generation of the other people. Mm. That is something that we should actually have yes. a very bigger margin of difference within Yes. yes, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Justice, thank for you. that uh, important statement. And I think uh, many of us have been in these political spaces. There is not much difference between us. We have the same problems. Mm -hmm. We have the same concerns. Yeah. Uh, and I think what you beg that we do is uh, actually a responsibility that we have to take up seriously. Yeah, so uh, for our dear viewers, we now want to switch up a bit, uh, discussing issues around how the government is performing uh, in the midterm. We are in between 21 and 2026. I believe uh, political parties are starting. Maybe FDC is a bit distracted. But I believe Renewed Uganda and uh, NRM are already <laughs> planning for 2026. Um, but the most important thing is this time in between. And uh, there are several things that you, you came into NYC in the last election. and. Uh, where you are, your preview of a lot of information. Uh, one of the key things you have to do as NYC is monitor uh, service delivery. So we had many things in the last manifesto, including productivity, industrialization, rural development, education, health, law and order, security. But uh, I believe one of the big issues concerning our young people is issues around productivity and you know, economic emancipation because we suffer from unemployment. Now, the government uh, released the PDM, you know, as a project and Youth Livelihood Fund, etc. Have these programs worked for the youth? PDM. I think uh, before the PDM, mm. government had a uh, MIOGA. Mm. You've heard of MIOGA, colleagues? Yeah. Which, uh, which program has been recapitalized mm. in uh, this financial budget? Yes. 
uh, after Emioga, I think Emioga came in towards elections mm. and immediately after elections. Mm. Uh, many, many people, uh, the voters, thought that was uh, a handshake from the president. Mm. That's, that's how very many perceived it. So it actually did not bring in the social economic transformation as as intended as intended yes however a few people or a few groups a few emioga groups because mm. i remember minister kasola and his team yes were trying to traverse the country to find out whether or not emioga has positively impacted on uh, the lives of ugandans mm. I think a few groups benefited and many, just like the other programs that government has uh, always initiated, mm. have not always brought the results. Yes. I think for me, I, government should uh, drill more on mindset mm. and I thank government that in the in this newly, mm. in this newly crafted program, yes, the famous parish development model, mm. it has a huge budget on mindset. Mm. I'm a young person and a leader of the young people mm. at the district level and a member of the National Youth Council. Yes, I have followed these programs. Mm. From the Capital Venture Fund, which is a, a government, a government youth, youth-led mm. project. Yes. Were you aware of the Capital Venture Fund? Yes, yes. yes, yes. That is a partnership between government of Uganda and Centenary Bank, yes. as we talk yes. right now. We had uh, the famous YLP program, yes. the Youth Livelihood program. program. Yes. All these are youth-led mm. government. These bust lots of monies. Yeah. To reach out to the young people so they mm. they better themselves mm. in a monetary and all that. But the problem has been one mm. mindset. In the last YLP program, Bondivujo alone is being demanded around uh, 1.2 billion. That is money that young people shared amongst themselves and took and, and they're not paying back. They are not paying back. Why are they not paying back the orientation, the mindset? Mm. In this era, in this era of time, when a young person is not fully oriented mm. as to why they are being given this money, mm. trust me, they'll take that money to drinking. In the rural areas, more especially where I come from, when a young person is given five million and he had one one wife, that is when he will think of a second wife. A second wife. Mm. That is when he will go to a bar, a local bar, give an open bar to the colleagues. And in a few days, the money is all parted out. Mm. So I think government is doing a lot. Yes. Government is uh, putting in a lot of money to the young people, but the mindset. Mm. This is where I'll take, I will request government to add more money mm. in sensitization and mindset change. Yes. It is that component is there in what? Mm. In the parish development model. Yes. So, all that aside, we see the parish development model. Mm. At the national level, as a national youth council, we made the bargain mm. with government that you know what? We should not only make noise about our numbers mm. as the youth and the young people, but our numbers should also be should also be seen to count yes, in yes. terms of uh, the resource envelope, what the young people take. Mm. Uh, government got lots of monies and put in the PDM. So we are saying 
or we said we pleaded to government and said you know what of the money is the your, plan is your regime in next yeah, yeah 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 this is the national youth council under jacob Ayer. under jacob Ayer. Mm. Uh, we said of the 100 million the mm. plan is each parish should have 100 million mm. every quarter normally government would bring money mm. And uh, it used to be, is it decentralized? Money would be decentralized. It would mm -hmm. begin from the top, Up trickling down. down. Yes. The populace would complain mm. that these technical people at district level, at national level, would chew this money. Yes. By the time it reaches to the beneficial at village or parish level, yes. it is actually not money that can impact the life mm. of someone. So now, government had to devise Switch, yeah. an approach mm. to, be, to bring money at parish level. Mm. And as we talk, people are receiving money at parish level. Mm. And uh, another beauty about the parish development model is that people are receiving money on their accounts, mm. bank accounts. I saw, I've seen very many beneficiaries who have yes. made that confession, which is something good. So here there is no one to, yes. there is no one to blame. Yes. You're getting money on your account, you have your own passcode in the bank, you withdraw that money mm. and invest it in okay. your business. Yeah. That is, I think that is a plus for government. Mm. In case any other things fail, we yes. can say at least people Received money. So are you, are you happy as uh, with the government performance thus far? Do I, you see I, progress? I, I am still, I'm still, I'm still yeah. getting there. Yeah. I beg that you just, because our time is running. Yeah, there is, there is progress. There, there is yes, progress. Yes. At least there is progress. Yeah. Then, in, in regards to the youth perspective, mm. we bargained for 30% yes. of all the monies that are to come mm. at parish level. Yes. We are saying, of the 100 million, Mm. Let government give us 30%. Yes. And uh, government was in agreement with us. Where they differed from us is that they are saying of the groups that are to receive money, mm. the member, the circle, that are to receive money from the circles, yes. the youth should be 30% of the composition mm. of those groups. Yes. And now that is why we are. There's some bureaucracy. Deferring from government. Because you find that a whole group does not have any young person. Mm. But if there is a designate percentage for the youth, for the young people, mm. that you know what? It is 30%. Of the groups formed, let 30% of these groups be for the young people. Mm. We shall know Rather that... Rather than 30% within... A bigger group. Uh, rather than being 30% within a bigger group. Okay. Because there is also a likelihood, like we've seen it, mm. that those groups, many of them do not actually have yes. the young people. Mm. So we still continue to plead to government yes. that at least let this be realized. Yes. Let the youth get 30% of the PDM monies mm. In terms of money, is not composition mm. in the groups. Yeah, Otherwise, you. it is a plus for government. Yes. I must appreciate yeah. it. Th thank you very much. Uh, our time is running out, but I really want to get your perspectives on uh, mid-term performance of government. Um, Honorable Mitchell, what do you take on? What's your take on the government performance? Uh, very close to us is the uh, PDM, which was supposed to, you know, change everything so that we benefit directly. He has tried to hint on it, but also we have other. Um, that metrics that we need to weigh, including the National Youth Council itself, that is supposed to <laughs> serve us. Are you, for example, pleased with, with their role uh, within the government structures? Yeah. Well, I <coughs> thank you for such uh, an insightful uh, discussion because I think that is a discussion that we need to have as yeah. a young people, yes. apart from discussing the angles of, of our elders. Yes. This is what is supposed to discuss because directly benefits us. Yes. A lot of people do not know what 
that actually TDM TDM is there. Mm. When I get to my to my mother and ask her what is TDM, she will not get to know mm. that TDM actually exists because you never see uh, local council leaders come to mobilize people mm. for such for such for such activities. Yes, I will say that there is good will from the president mm. to release these funds, mm. but you see, he will not be able to. To release the funds every year, year in, year in, year, year, in, year out, year yes, in, year out. Yes. There is need for this money to come back to the government mm. so that maybe if, if there is increment, just, it is just a supplementary. Yes. But actually, what is happening is that if they release 100 billions, it goes and makes sure they have to release 100 billions. Yes. Money for loans uh, in, in, in money lenders, uh, I'm sure we have we have a consultant here in, yeah. in, in money <laughs> mm. Mm. When you start up with a capital of 100 billion yes. and you raise it out, you're not supposed to bring more capital. Mm. That money you've released out should, is, be, revolving. should, should be revolving. It mm. should come back mm. so that you maybe give it to other people to benefit mm. in, in that same, in that same, uh, yes, in that same yes. program. But what is happening right now is that people are getting the money and they're not bringing it back. And I don't blame them. Mm. Do you know why? The, the officers in charge of this money, mm. they're not actually giving out it out for it to come back. Mm. They're giving out to people of their interest. If, yes. if, if my chairman here is a friend and his owner have chosen to give the money, mm. not give it to just us who qualifies. Mm. Who is educated that he's supposed to bring back the money, but I chose a friend to give it back to him. Mm. Do you expect I'll go back to him and no, tell no, him no. bring back the money? Yes, yes. The people, it is it is it is like a scam. The people actually that are receiving the money to distribute out to the young people. Mm. They are giving out to people that and the condition is not to bring it back. Mm. It is a handshake. Yes. They're giving out to like a handshake that you go and use. Mm. You go and start up your business, and government and is many, many, many are not using it. Anyway. Many are not using it mm. because they are not they are not on any pressure. Mm. In the real sense, money that is being lended to you should you should have pressure to pay it back. You ever got and the loan. pressure is useful to to but make you to make you the see, money work. You see, let me tell you: if Ugandans are not ready to to, to be on pressure. Mm. And we want to receive money for PDM, for PDM mm. then we are not ready for such programs. Yes. First of all, you have to be ready. And when you receive such money, you should be on pressure to bring it back. Yes. Meaning, when, when, when you receive the money, you shouldn't go to the bank to spend it. You mm. should actually spend the profit you've, you've made in that money because mm. you're supposed to bring it back. My, 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 my thinking is this. When uh, we shall use an example, when I was still a speaker at Makere, yeah. we had issues of students who don't have laptops and these accessories. Yeah. So there was there was there was a discussion within within management that they they purchase laptops and then give it to students mm. and they will be they will be getting back they, the money from the students. Yes. But you see, the discussion was these students have an entitlement that they should be supported by the university. Yes. The moment the university rolls out laptops to the students, mm. they will not pay it back. Pay. I remember when the I invested in that form. Y- you remember? <laughs> yes. I didn't see the laptop. I'm going to, I'm going to come to that side. <laughs> yeah. That when students, when the university rolls out laptops to mm. the students, yeah. the students have an entitlement to the university administration that is supposed to provide them with, with services. Mm. So literally, when the university starts demanding students to bring the money that was taken, that was used for the laptops. Mm. Students will actually turn into some other thing. You see, you, you're increasing tuition. The same as citizens will do. Mm. You're giving FDC 7 billions. That is what is going to happen. You're giving FDC 7 billion yeah, and you want that. me to bring back one, uh, 10 million. Mm. You get. So the citizens have an entitlement on the government that mm. the government should give them such services. Mm. So I think it is high time that the president revises means of how this money gets to the Ugand- to, to the ordinary Ugandan yes. and how it comes back to the circle. Yes. This is my thinking. That how about we get private how about we get private contractors? Yeah. This private like maybe some stand big bank mm. is charged with government goes into cooperation and MOUs with these private contractors. Yeah, yeah. They are charged with the role of distributing the money to the to the Ugandans, and they are also charged with the role of getting back the money mm. from the Ugandans 
back to yes to government so that money can be available for yeah. the next cy- cy- cycle yes. maybe next yeah. year thank you Mitchell. and uh, yeah i remember uh, during the it's very important to have to kill the cycle of dependency uh, during the war we had in northern uganda because of receiving things for 20 years you know every month would line up for food no sako one no so lost people forgot how to <laughs> produce oh, it is, and it's yeah. something we are still fighting but also too I, what i learned from you is uh, money should follow production systems not reward systems. not rewarding systems yeah um, i our time is fast spent but i wanted you gentlemen maybe in a minute or two to hint on um, your reviews on government performance uh and then we can have we can close for today yeah uh, thank you so much i won't say uh so much but yeah. uh one I, won't, i wouldn't say that the government has performed to what we expected yeah because if you're looking at the medical interns that are there without placements what really would you say yeah. that the government uh, has worked yes. because take an example of the people that we actually talking about the village people how yeah. are they going to receive the medication yeah. recently had in bududa where students died uh, thank you very much our dear viewers for joining us on this episode of the youth roundtable it has been a very enriching discussion with very capable uh, young leaders i believe you've all been in service at one point leading students and i expect to see all of you uh, participating very actively in the future of this country. Uh, it has been a very enriching discussion. I've learned a lot uh, from all of you. Unfortunately, uh, time is never enough, but uh, this is just the beginning. Uh, this is just a show of, of some of the things we discuss in private. Uh, our call on to you fellow youth is to continue uh, interacting where you are, but also seek out uh, our dear colleagues. You can find us on Twitter at Civic Space. Where we'll have all the handles of our colleagues here uh, seek out a discussion let's continue to dialogue and to think about a better uganda for our generation thank you very much it was a pleasure hosting you i remain okotola your host for the show today <laughs>